Hey everybody, this is Clint Arthur, creator of Celebrity Launchpad, CEO of Status Factory, best-selling author of What They Teach You at the Wharton Business School. And this video is about this bench. This is the bench right here. This is the bench where it all began. And I was thinking about this bench, and I think about this bench a lot because this was the bench where I first bought a joint. I was 12 years old and I went to summer camp the summer before and my best friend from summer camp was a kid named Russell Fine. And it was Russell Fine's birthday and Russell Fine said, when you come up for my birthday party, bring a joint. You gotta bring a joint. So, this was a very different park. This is Madison Square Park. You probably have seen this park in Sex in the City. Today, it's a beautiful family location. But in the days when I was growing up in New York City, when it was Urban Blight in New York City, and the name of my high school band was Urban Blight. I was not in the band, that was just the band at my high school. Urban Blight. And this park was not a nice place. It really, really wasn't. This park was where I came to score drugs. <laughs> I, I literally came here and I walked around figuring this was a seedy place and that I could hook up with somebody and buy a joint. And so I'm walking through the park and there's this African-American guy in an army jacket sitting on this bench. And as I walk by, he goes, sense, sense, joints, joints. And I go, hey, and he goes, have a seat. And I go, uh, what do you got? And he goes, I got Acapulco gold. Today, Acapulco has a very different meaning for me, but Acapulco gold was the good stuff in those days and I said can I try it and he said sure and he lit up a joint and we sat here and we smoked the joint me and this guy I don't know how old he was he seems at this point like he was in his 20s and I bought like I don't know two three joints from the guy for a dollar a piece they were one dollar <laughs> uh, and I went up to the Bronx where Russell Fine lived and it was his birthday party and we smoked the joint at his birthday party. Now, by the time I was 13 or 14, I realized I didn't like smoking pot and I gave up smoking pot. But when I was in college, I started again. and. I was smoking pot from the time I was like 19 until December 14th, 2009. And you know, I, I'm telling you about this all because I realize if I was still smoking pot, I could not have been on Fox Business Network today doing my 84th television appearance. I quit smoking pot when I went to a raw vegan retreat at Optimum Health Institute in San Diego and there was a policy, no drugs and alcohol, so I stopped smoking pot and thank God I have never started again because I don't care what people say, I believe that smoking pot is a, at, very, at the very worst, it's a bad habit. I honestly believe that I was addicted to smoking pot and I had to make a break with that addiction in order to take my life forward because I had wanted to be on TV for a long, 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 long time. I had wanted to be on TV and I could never quote unquote make it happen. I'll tell you why not. I had lack of self-confidence. I had self-doubt. I had insecurity. I had paranoia as a result of smoking pot. It always was the way it would impact me. I always would feel like I was less than I otherwise would have been if I wasn't smoking pot. And it's not like I was like, you know, burning 24 hours a day. I wasn't. At the end of the day, I would have a couple hits to relax. 
and that would mean that I couldn't answer the phone to take business calls after 6.30 or so. And I remember one time I got a call from a, one of my client chefs after I was already high and I was like so freaked out because I had to talk to the executive chef of Bellagio while I was stoned and I was like freaking out. But you know, it's really interesting for me because I look back on why did I start smoking pot? For friendship. I wanted friendship. And even in college when I started smoking pot again, it was because of the friends that I was hanging out with. That's why I did it. And really, that's why I go on TV. I, you know, ultimately, friendship and wanting friends is about wanting love. And I've been trying to fill this hole inside of myself. Since I'm a little kid, before I even knew what the hole was about, where did the hole come from? So, uh, shortly after I went through that experience, going to that birthday party, that's when I was 12. When I was 14 years old, I read about the Wharton Business School in a book and I realized, hey, if I could go to the Wharton Business School, maybe that would make me somebody special. Maybe that would get people to love me. See, I knew there was something missing. I didn't know what it was yet, but I knew there was something missing and I was trying to compensate and I was trying to bring love into my life in the form of friends and performing. I, you know, I started going on stage. I was starring in school plays when I was 12, when I was 13, when I was 14, when I was 15. I was the star of school play each one of those years. Again, trying to bring in the love to heal what was missing. And I didn't know what was missing yet, but I figured if I could go to the Wharton Business School and become somebody special, that maybe my parents would stop fighting. You know, this is the kind of twisted viewpoints that kids have. Your parents ever fight when you were growing up with us? It was like, when weren't my parents fighting? And sure enough, I graduate from Wharton with a 4.0 GPA and I go home to visit the parents and sure enough, they get into a huge argument. My dad storms out of the living room, slams the door to the bedroom, and I turn to my mom and I say, uh, you know, mom, the way he resents you all these years, have you been cheating on dad? And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, I can't believe you just asked your mom a question like that. What kind of smart ass kid asks his mom a question like that? Seriously. And then I'm sitting there thinking, why isn't mom answering the question? And then she says, he's not your real father. Your real father was a doctor at the fertility clinic and you look just like him. Imagine how you would feel. In a split second, everything you knew about who you were, poof. I didn't know who I was anymore. I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up anymore. I had an offer from an investment bank on the 87th floor of number one World Trade Center and I said, no, thank you. And naturally I moved out to Hollywood and started chasing the Hollywood dream, trying to reinvent myself, trying to figure out who am I? That's really the heart and soul of every Hollywood movie, every story, every great work of art is about who am I? And that's what I was looking for, who am I? And I chased the Hollywood dream for 13 years. And the last six of those years, I was driving a taxi. And I'm telling you, I could not crack the Hollywood dream. And on New Year's Eve of the Millennium, I'm driving a taxi in LA, 
in the back seat of my cab are these two MBA interns at Goldman Sachs talking about this big executive at Goldman. He was the last executive to make partner before the IPO. Did you hear, did you hear Mr. Carrera cashed in 100 million from the IPO? I turn around, hey, you guys talking about Chris Carrera? How do you know Mr. Carrera? Chris Carrera was a pledge in my fraternity when I was the pledge master. I used to make the pledges dance around the living room of the house with their underpants on top of their head. And now this kid just cashed out a hundred million and I'm driving a taxi. That night I swore an oath I was gonna quit writing. It wasn't worth it. I was gonna do everything I could to change how I was showing up in the world. And I knew, luckily, somehow I knew that the changes I was looking for were gonna come from inside me. And I started doing every kind of personal development and self-help kind of work you could do. I did Toltec Wisdom Studies with Don Miguel Ruiz. I did Tony Robbins Walking on Fire. I did Men's Power Circles and Ceremonies. I did everything you could do to change. And when you start focusing on doing something, when you really focus on doing something, it actually works. And soon I was out of taxi driving and I was making money selling butter. And once I started making money, naturally I met my beautiful wife, Allie. And lucky for me, Allie was a nice person and she really believed in me. She wasn't interested in my money, she was interested in me. And she inspired me to get into real estate, to learn how to do real estate. And throughout the 2000s, I got fat and happy doing real estate and selling butter. And that took me all the way to October of 2008. You know what was going on in the world and everybody was freaking out. And that's when the shaman pointed at me across the yellow and orange crackling flames of the campfire. He said, you don't know it yet, but you're already dead. <laughs> what do you mean, man? I'm the most successful guy on the team. I was a taxi driver eight years ago. Now I'm a millionaire. I was living on a little boat. Now I live in a mansion. Ah, you're already dead. You just don't know it. And I didn't know what he was talking about, but I couldn't stop thinking about what he was saying. And a couple months later, I wake up. It's New Year's Day of 2009, and I'm inspired by what the shaman said at the campfire. And I ask myself the question that changed everything in my life, and that was, if if this was gonna be the last year of my life, what would I want to accomplish? And that's when I started writing again. Now, when I was in high school, my creative writing teacher was a man by the name of Frank McCourt. He was a lot of people's favorite teacher. He taught creative writing. And I took his elective creative writing class for two years I was in there. And I, he inspired me to want to be a writer. He inspired everybody who took his class to want to be a writer. He was just the most interesting, charismatic guy. He would tell us these stories that came from his youth in Ireland. And he adapted them into this play that he did with his brother, Malachi McCourt, called A Couple of Blackguards. And then, lo and behold, in the late 1990s, I think it was like 99 or 2000 or 2001, somewhere in there, he publishes his memoir, Angela's Ashes, and wins the Pulitzer Prize for his memoir about his impoverished childhood in Ireland. And man, if that didn't make me want to be a writer, I, you know what, looking back on it, that is what re-inspired me to start writing again. Yeah because I had quit writing. I had quit, oh, I, no, I quit writing. Man, maybe that's what, maybe, maybe at that point that was part of my decision to quit writing. I felt like, oh my God, I'm never going to be as good a writer as Frank McCord. I don't know. I just know that in 2009, I lived as if I was gonna die at the end of the year, and I wrote my book, and I hadn't written a word since 2000. 
and I wrote my book, What They Teach You at the Wharton Business School. And I waited for the sales to roll in. I published it on Kindle, and in 2009, boy did those sales ever roll in. All eight of those sales rolled in. I'm sitting in my office one day, towards the end of 2009, I'm looking at the book on a shelf in my office, collecting dust, and I'm thinking, I cannot believe that my book about the greatest business school in the world and the wisdom that I learned there is just collecting dust. So luckily I sought out a mentor, his name was Jack Canfield. I said, Jack Canfield, how do you sell books? How do you sell half a billion chicken soup for the soul of books? He goes, you gotta go on media, you gotta go on TV, you gotta become somebody special. And that began my journey on television. Now, luckily for me, one of the things that coincided was December 14, 2009, I quit smoking pot. I went to the Optimal Health Institute and I quit smoking pot. And it was on January 21st, 2010, that I got booked on my first show. I put up the money, I hired a publicist, I said I don't care what it's gonna cost, get me on the Today Show. She laughed at me. She said, Clint, they're never gonna put you on the Today Show. You're a middle-aged guy nobody's ever even heard of. You got a self-published book nobody's ever even bought. No TV experience. Why would they put you on the number one show on television? It's never gonna happen. You gotta go on local TV. I said, okay, get me on in New York City. And when she stopped laughing at me the second time, she said, Clint, I think I got you figured out. You're not really a business author. You're a freaking comedian because that's the second hysterically funny thing you said to me in 30 seconds. They're never gonna put you on NBC New York. It's the number one station in the number one market. That's like national TV. They'll never do it. You're a middle-aged guy. Nobody's ever even heard of. You got a self-published book. Nobody's ever even bought. No TV experience. Why would they put you on that show? You gotta go on little local shows and maybe you can work your way up one day. Next thing I know, I'm flying to Salt Lake City, Utah to do my appearance. She says, don't forget to bring your long underwear. It was February. And I'm going to Salt Lake City, Utah to go on TV. And I'm like, why are they gonna put me on TV in Salt Lake City, Utah? I'm a middle-aged guy nobody's ever even heard of. I got a self-published book nobody's ever even bought. No TV experience. Why would they put me on TV? But they did, and I thought it would be awesome, but really I sucked. I sucked on my first four appearances. I said to my wife, honey, take a look at my appearances. What do you think? She said, I think you suck. And I said, okay, I'm gonna hire this publicist to book me on 10 more shows. And my wife is not only the nicest person in the world, everybody loves her, but she's also the smartest person in the world. And she said to me, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why do you keep paying this lady to book you on TV? Why don't you book your own TV appearances? How do you do that? How do you book your own TV appearances? Don't you look like a loser if you call up a TV station and you say, hey, I wanna be on TV? Yeah, you do look like a loser if you do it like that. You have to learn how to pitch a TV producer professionally. And you have to know what to say and what to put in the segment so that they're gonna want you on their show. And it took me months to figure out how to do this, but I did because I am a stubborn son of a bitch. <laughs> and my first year, it took me two and a half months to book my first appearance. It was on ABC TV in Biloxi, Mississippi. And that year I booked a total of seven TV appearances. My second year booking myself on shows, I booked another 20. And my 32nd appearance came after two full years. It was on President's Day, 2012, on NBC New York. And I booked that show off a cold email that I sent to a producer that I never even met. And then a year later, right after one of my favorite students, Sandy Masori, booked herself on the Today Show, I got the call and I was invited to go on the Today Show. And in 2012, I started 
hearing from a lot of people, hey Clint, you're, you're on fire, you're doing great. How can I get on TV? How can I use TV to help my career? This is what I was hearing from my friends and people I was meeting at conferences. So I started teaching people how to book themselves on TV and I looked, how I did it was I looked at the segments that I booked myself on TV with and I analyzed, broke them down, I deconstructed it, I reverse engineered it. What was it about these segments that producers were responding to that they were inviting me on their shows? And that's when I came up with my formula for how to book yourself on TV anytime you want for free. And I started, I started out, I thought, I'm just gonna give away these training videos to promote my other books and products that I was promoting on TV. And it turned out that the TV training was what more people were interested in than anything else. So I started selling the TV training and I started selling coaching and then my group coaching model evolved into what is today called Celebrity Launchpad. And through the power of Celebrity Launchpad, which includes the home study training, which includes group coaching on webinars every week, which includes my personal Rolodex of the top 100 markets and all the stations and producers who can book you. It includes my collection of more than 275 segment proposals, the one page proposals that I write for my clients <clears throat> that get them booked on TV. All of that is included plus an implementation event where you come and pitch my friends who are producers at ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox shows. And I guarantee that at least three of them are gonna book you on their shows or you get all your money back plus $1,000. We've had 100% success. Everyone books at least four television appearances. That's why I promised three because I know I can over deliver on the three. I promise at least 10 producers are gonna come. We've never had less than 13. I have it as a basic business philosophy that I over deliver on everything that I do. And as a result of this, my students and I have booked ourselves on more than 3,313 television appearances that I'm aware of so far, including all the biggest shows, Good Morning America, Today Show, Dr. Oz, CNN, Fox Business Network, etc., etc., etc. And I look back on all of this. And remember, I'm, I'm making this video because of this bench, because it really comes back to this bench. I look back on all of this, on my whole entire freaking life. What has been driving me? What has been driving me is this inner hole. This inner sense that something was missing. You know what was missing? Daddy was missing. And on a subconscious level, I've been hoping maybe I could get famous enough. Maybe I could have enough friends. Maybe enough people would love me that that it would fill up what was missing from daddy. But that's not ever happened. Maybe I could get so famous. Maybe I, maybe I could get so famous that daddy would see me. That's never happened. And so, that's what's been driving everything. Wanting to feel like there wasn't so much missing. Now, I don't know, maybe this is a bad strategy. Maybe it's a bad philosophy. Maybe it's never gonna work. I don't know. All I know is that's what's driving me. And the good news is that it's motivated me to deliver my special gift, which is how to get on TV, to hundreds of authors, speakers, coaches, entrepreneurs, CEOs, nonprofit directors, messengers of every kind, people who have a message that they want to get out and they want to use the most powerful platform on the planet, the most powerful media on the planet, which is television, 
to empower their message and get it out to as many people as possible. For entrepreneurs, I don't know anything that can be more powerful for your marketing than to go on TV and use television as your primary marketing weapon in your arsenal. Your number one job as an entrepreneur is to stand out. If you look, I, I've had the privilege of sharing this message at Harvard with the Entrepreneurship Students Club of Harvard Business School, at West Point with the Leaders of Tomorrow, and at USC where my daughter was a junior in college at the time and when I spoke for the entrepreneurship students at USC, I told them this, I told my daughter this. If you look at the logo of the USC Entrepreneurship Department, it's called the Grief Center for Entrepreneurial Studies, you'll see the logo is a circle of red dots with one dot outside the circle. And your job is to be the dot outside the circle if you want to succeed as an entrepreneur. So how are you going to do that today? I mean, the marketplace is so freaking crowded with authors, speakers, coaches, entrepreneurs. How are you going to stand out? Hey, I told this to them, I told it to my daughter, I'll tell it to anybody who wants to succeed. I will tell this to anyone in my family, anyone I care about. I swear to God, this is the key to it all. You have to stand out. And ideally, you want to stand out not just as somebody different, but somebody better. And everybody knows in today's society, celebrities are better. Celebrities, right or wrong, right or wrong, in today's society, you look at a celebrity and celebrities are perceived to be higher status than others. They get to go across the red velvet rope. That's high status. They get to go to the VIP rooms. They get to go in the limousines. They get to do all the things that people want to do but don't get a chance to do because they're not celebrities. You get to do that if you're a celebrity because you're higher status. And the only way to really become a celebrity or at the very least, the only way to position yourself as someone who appears to be a celebrity in the eyes of your customers and prospects is to go on TV, on news and talk shows, and to do exactly like that publicist said. I didn't like it, I didn't want to hear it at the time, but she was absolutely right. You have to start out on little tiny shows and work your way up to the medium-sized shows and then to the big shows and then all the way up to the big time. You have to pay your dues. And if you skip any steps, it's only gonna come and bite you in the ass. If you skip steps, you're gonna be on a big show before you're ready and instead of being great, you're just gonna be okay and being okay doesn't cut it. You have to be outstanding. As I wrote in my book, What They Teach You at the Wharton Business School, quality is assumed. And if you can't deliver a high quality product, you have no business being in business. If you can't deliver a high quality performance on TV, as I did today when I was on Mornings with Maria for my second time, if you can't deliver a great appearance, then you have no business being on TV. And the only way you're gonna, go, you're gonna be able to deliver a great appearance on TV is to pay your dues and work your way up and learn how to be a great guest. I know it looks easy. I know you think, I've watched a lot of TV. How hard can it be? It's not easy. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. A lot of really minute details of audio quality as well as video performance, how you look when you're on TV. There's so much to it and you have to learn and ideally you're gonna have a coach, somebody like me, I'm unique in the media training world. I'm the only coach who is an author, a speaker, a coach, an entrepreneur. I'm unlike every other media trainer on the planet who were all former news anchors or they're publicists, but they don't go on TV and answer the questions that are asked of the guest. They don't know how to be a guest. I know how to be a guest. I'm a guest every single week. 
on some show someplace. I just did my 84th television appearance as a guest. Not as a host, as a guest. And I've learned the hard way how to answer questions and I've learned the hard way how to be great on TV because I've made all the mistakes and I've paid the price. And I've looked like a fool and I've looked good. I've learned how to look good. And I've learned how not to look like a fool. And that's what I teach my clients. I've helped almost 600 authors, speakers, coaches, and entrepreneurs to date and coach them every week on my weekly celebrity entrepreneur webinars. Every Wednesday, usually it's a Wednesday at five o'clock Pacific time. I'm on a webinar and I say who was on TV this week and I watch their appearance on TV and I give them coaching and critique of how they could do better the next time. And it's been a real privilege to be able to have that as a laboratory for my own work as a coach and to be able to develop the rapport and the friendships with my clients because you know celebrities hang out with other celebrities and I'm always looking to hang out with new celebrity friends and build my community of celebrity entrepreneurs friends and looking back on it all man you know the times when I felt closest to healing what's been missing have been the times when I've got to be on big shows sharing my unique message you know and I was on the Today Show I got to share my whole this is the last year of your life if this was the last year of your life what would you want to accomplish I actually said that on the Today Show uh, I, I shared my basic philosophies of life that life begins where your comfort zone ends I really believe that the more you can get out of your comfort zone the more you're gonna grow as a person and then Brooke Shields goes it's scary and I said when it's scary is when it's great when you're taking risks when you're out of your comfort zone when you're exploring new frontiers as they would say on Star Trek that is when it's really great that's when life is the best and then the other times this is about going into the why the other times that I felt the closest to healing what's been missing have been the times when my friends have been on their big breakthrough shows when Dr. Kellyanne was on Good Morning America, when Sandy was on the Today Show, when Joyce was on the Today Show, when Veronica Gray was on Good Morning America, when my clients like Sean King are on Fox Los Angeles, or Sharon Wyeth is on Fox New York. Hey, look at the testimonials on GuaranteedCelebrity.com. Look at the case studies on GuaranteedCelebrity.com. You'll see all my clients there. When my friends get the opportunity to break through in their lives and have their moments of glory, that's the other time when I really feel the closest, like something is healing inside. So. Maybe it's not the best business philosophy. Maybe it's not the best personal philosophy for growth. I don't know, I'm not a shrink. I got a, I got a lot of clients who are shrinks, <clears throat> but you know, the human heart is a mystery that maybe never will be solved. I'm just doing the best I can. Like my wife says, I'm doing the best I can. And right now, what that involves is Celebrity Launchpad and helping change the world, one messenger at a time. That's our mission, Ali and I have the mission. We're changing the world, one messenger at a time. And along the way, you get to learn how to be a celebrity, how to market yourself like a celebrity, how to exploit your celebrity assets of going on TV. How to generate the assets of going on TV, how to deploy them, redeploy them. It's all about the marketing. You know, a lot of people think celebrity is about ego. It's not about ego. Maybe it's about heart. For me, it's about heart. For me, it's about healing. But for most celebrities, it's primarily about marketing. That's what it is for me. 
It's about marketing. It's about marketing. How are you going to stand out? How are you going to make your unique place in a world which is crowded, crowded, crowded with lots and lots of people all doing the same stuff? How are you going to do it? How are you going to stand out? The best way I know is to go on TV. The best way I know is to position yourself as a celebrity in the eyes of your customers and prospects. And it's, it's easy, it's fast, and it's free. You don't have to pay to go on TV on real shows. You have to pay if you want to have infomercials. You have to pay if uh, you want to have commercials. But if you want to be positioned as an expert guest on TV news and talk shows, it's all free. And in this way, you can rather quickly, in the, in the grand scheme of things, it's only been about six years since I started really going on TV. And here I am recurring on Fox Business Channel and I've been on every show in America and I've created a seven-figure business just working with my wife and a couple of part-time infrequent virtual assistants that we use. We have a, a seven-figure business. Forbes magazine profiled us twice and one of the magazine articles said that I'm minting celebrities with local TV. We travel the world. We're gonna be spending 50 nights at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel in Honolulu this year. And all together we vacation almost four months a year. We live where we want, how we want, go to any restaurant we want, and never worry about the bill. It's all happening with our cell phones and our new MacBook Pro touch bars. <laughs> and it, all of this is powered by celebrity and the beautiful thing is we've had a hundred percent success working with every single client because I really know what I'm doing I really know how to help you to accomplish your goals and I would love to help you if you are a messenger and you want to make more of a difference and more of a fortune if you want to have more impact and influence it's all here for you celebrity launchpad so go to GuaranteedCelebrity.com, check it out, do your due diligence, screw on some cojones, and fill out the application. Don't procrastinate it. The longer you take to do it, the less chance there is that you'll actually do it. Fill out the application and invest your money intelligently on something that is going to really make a difference and work. And it's never gonna go away. They cannot take away these appearances. They can't take them away from me. They're on my media page. And even if they take my media page away, I still have them on my hard drive. And more important than that, more important than the seven figures that I earn every year as a result of my celebrity, more important than even meeting all the celebrities that I've met, Brooke Shields, Snoop, three presidents, Simon, all these celebrities, more important than anything is who and what I've become in the process. That's the real beauty of it. And that's what you're going to find is the most fulfilling part of it all is who and what you become in the process of becoming a celebrity. That changes everything. It changes who you are. It is the greatest personal development and transformation experience there is. Tony Robbins has his firewalk. I have my celebrity launch pad, media training, and media tour experience as my transformation experience. My mom, bless her, she's like 82 years old right now. And she'll call me up every now and then. She goes, Clint, I told you, you're gonna be the next Tony Rogers. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, Tony Robbins has his firewalk, and Clint Arthur, the next Tony Rogers, has the media tour and celebrity launch pad, and that's what's available for you, and that's what's going to change you, and that's what's going to make you have more charisma, power, uh, personal poise, 
confidence. It makes many of my clients better looking and it gives you more personal power and ability to communicate and express yourself in ways that you never would have dreamed possible. They can't take it away from you. When you go on TV, they can't take that away from you. Oh, they can't take that away from you. It's gonna wrap it up. There's only one thing left to say. I'm Clint Arthur, and I am looking forward to seeing you on television.